Welcome to Eucanic. Today here on Eucanic we got a Mazda 3 and we're going to go over how you replace the back brakes and rotor on this Mazda 3. Now the back brakes and rotor they're not any different than the front disc brakes except that you have this cable here that is for the emergency brake. So for you to have access for this to, rem to be able to move and this spin you're going to have to make sure that you've got the, the car um, in park or in gear but also the front tires chalked and and not and don't have the brake on because if you have the brake on then these are going to be applied and they're not going to you're not going to be able to get it off so to be able to do this we've got two bolts here we've got to loosen up and that will remove the whole carrier and then we can get access to the brakes and then we'll remove the two bolts that remove the whole um, this is carrier and cal caliper. To remove the caliper, let's go back a second. So here, you're going to remove these two bolts on the back of the caliper, which will be able to move the caliper out of the way. And then, when once we've done that, we can also take out the two bolts that hold the carrier piece, and that is more what's holding the, the brakes themselves. Then we can remove the disc and to be able to put a new one and to put new uh, brakes in. So we'll go through that process. So to loosen this, this is a 13 on the back, it's a 17 on the front. Sometimes they loosen just fine, but this is spinning. So we need to hold it with another wrench to be able to get them to come all the way out. All right. With those two removed, this will be able to move. Up and out of the way. You may want to. I don't think we're going to have to do that. We don't have to disconnect that. I was thinking we may have had to disconnect the uh, the e brake, but we don't have to. Not at this particular moment. Anytime. Okay, so we can go ahead and remove the brakes. See, we don't got, oh, missing a chunk of brake right there. And we don't got very much brake left on these. So, very close to the wear. Um, it's fairly even wear, so that's good. Now, to remove this whole carrier so that we can remove the, um, this is a 14. All right, so as you can see, the rotor has been uh, had to use some uh, hammer force, knocking some of the corrosion and the the rust away to get that removed. Now this caliper has been a little is a little different in that it has these little spots in there, so that denotes that we need to spin this one back to be able to get the the caliper to go in the reverse order. So you need a special tool. This is one where you can't just use a, a generic tool. But you need a special tool that you can get a decently cheap version or you can actually rent this tool from your local auto parts store. And so it sits in there and then you got this plate that you're going to sit here and then this actually spins backwards and you'll see here in a second. So what you do when you get your tool all set up, and we've got these little teeth that are in there, right? Um, there was four-sided teeth. It's an adapter that goes on here. Then you've got this. And what you do is you tighten with a wrench on this, give it some tightness, and push it. And then you spin this handle up here. And then that way, what it does is it spins the caliper back so 
in the reverse order. And as we push it back, we're going to want to make sure that we're not pinching the boot cover there so we don't have to replace the whole caliper or rebuild kit. See, now we're pushed all the way back. We can tell that because we've got decent resistance and we definitely moved all the way back. So that caliper has been twisted and spun backwards and now just You just loosen this and remove it. And you see we've pushed that caliper back and it's been put back into place. And so now we can go ahead and put our rotor back on or put the new rotor on, put the brake carrier on, and then we can be able to put this on. So we've got our rotor on. Another thing, and it's just sitting on there. Another thing you want to look, you want to double check that these have, um, that they slide well. These do slide well, but you want to put some new grease, which this needs some new grease. So you just pull these off. Right? And if you need to replace those grommets, you can buy them. Um, those rubber grommets, you can buy some new ones. So I would just clean this off. Wipe it clean. And then take some disc caliper grease. It's a very high temperature grease because your brakes will get a high temperature. Put it on the pin and then just put it in. I like to kind of spin it as it goes in so that it gets completely coated, you know? And then, again, do it with the second one. Press it in there, we're good to go. So to put your new brakes in, you just kind of push them down into the clip. If you had new clips in your kit, you would put these new clips on. I don't have new clips, so we're not gonna worry about it. Just wanna make sure that things are gonna slide fairly easily, back and forth, all right? And then you just push the clip in toward it and press it and make sure you're in there. Um, I don't think it completely really matters, but the old one had the wear sensor up on the top, uh, or no, on the bottom. So I just made sure I got the right pair of brake shoes, or discs, yeah, brake shoes, to put it so that that wear sensor went on the top. And when that's all done, then you're just gonna go ahead and put this back on here, the carrier piece and put the two number 14 bolts in. And now we can go ahead and take this brake caliper Sand it over the brakes. Press it down. And then carrier bolts in. Same with the other one, two, start it. And see now this one, the carrier is spinning at the bottom. So you're gonna need to have your 13 millimeter on the outside and a 17 on the inside to hold it and to tighten it up. Sometimes you get away with spinning it all the way in without, um, without it spinning. And if not, and the best is if you have a narrow um, 17, it comes in handy. This doesn't have a backstop, so we're going to do quite well with 
just what we got. So that was good and tight. We got the same up top here where the carrier bolt is spinning on us. That's all good and tight. Make sure that everything is tight. Then just go ahead and put your tire back on and um, torque that to spec and then you're good to go. So we'll put the tire back on, then you would lower your car, take it back off the jack stands, lower your car, torque your tires to spec, pump your brakes, we'll start the car, pump your brakes a few times to make sure that you've pushed the uh, brake calipers close together so that your car will stop when you need to. That's how you change your rear brakes on the um, Mazda 3. Thanks for watching Yukanic, where you can be the mechanic.